Let's take a look at taking partial derivatives of exponentials again, but this time where the base is not e. So exponentials, we've got a variable in the exponent. The base is some number. It's a function of x. That's what this is saying, and the actual name of the function is f. So when we want to take a derivative, we take f prime of x. It's the natural log of the base times, keep it exactly the way it is, chain rule out the derivative of the exponent. Now we're taking derivatives just with respect to x, so the derivative of x is 1. Now what happens when you add a coefficient? We get the same process, natural log of the base, keep it exactly the way it is, chain rule out the derivative of the exponent, derivative of negative 4x with respect to x, negative 4. We can do the same thing when the exponent is more complex. Natural log of the base, keep the exponential exactly the way it is, chain rule out the derivative of the exponent. Derivative of x with respect to x is 1, derivative of negative 2x cubed is negative 6x squared. Now here we have a number 2 that's hanging out in front as a coefficient, and the reality is he just comes along for the ride. And then we do everything like we did before, natural log of the base, keep it exactly the way it is, chain rule out the derivative of the exponent with respect to x. So what we get when the base is a and the exponent is some function, we get the natural log of the base, keep the function exactly the way it is. g of x is just that uh, function of x in the exponent. And then we have to chain rule out the derivative of that exponent. So in shorthand, natural log of a, a to the g, and we'll say x there, and then times g prime. So don't forget to do that. A chain rule of the derivative of the exponent. So what happens when we have a function of x and y, and we know we have two variables, variables because of this notation. The function name is still f here, but the variables are x and y. And notice we have an x and y here in the exponent. So let's take a partial order derivative with respect to x. When we do that, x is the variable and y is just a number. In other words, this is if, as if we were saying 17, sorry, put a number there. If we said, what's the derivative of 17x, you would say 17. Well, I'm asking, what's the derivative of y times x, where y is a number, and it's just going to be y. Now, we have this 5 raised to the xy, so we have to use our rule for exponentials. It's going to be natural log of the base times keep it exactly the way it is. Chain rule out the derivative of the exponent. Now this is where we use our partial derivatives. The y is a number and it's a coefficient of x, so that means we are just going to get y. Let's go ahead and do the partial order first derivative with respect to, I'll do blue again, with respect to y now. f sub y, we're going to take the natural log of the base, keep the exponential exactly the way it is, and then we're going to chain rule out the derivative of the exponent, this time with respect to y. Last time we did it with respect to x. And so for us, when we see x, y, the x is just a number. It's a coefficient of y. And so what's the derivative of a linear function with a coefficient that isn't 1? It's just that number. And even if it is 1, derivative is that coefficient. Sorry. And so here we just get that number. Yes, we can rewrite these. They're multiplication, so they could be in any order. You could put the y out front and say y times this times this, or you can put this at the end, um, whatever floats your boat. Oh, look at that, look at that exponent. <laughs> Let's go ahead and, and do the first order partial derivatives on this. So f sub x, 
So that means x is the variable, y is the number, and it's an exponential with base e, so we take the natural log of 5, keep that exponential exactly the way it is. Now we're going to chain rule out the derivative of that exponent with respect to x. So when we do that, we look at one piece at a time. So 3x squared, the y is a number. From the 3x squared, we're going to get 6x, and then the y comes along for the ride. So we get 6xy. For the next term, there is an x there, so we're going to get a derivative. He actually has a coefficient of 1. His derivative, then, is minus 1. Look at the y. That's just a number. We do not have an x there, so the derivative of a constant is 0, so it's like plus 0. And then we're done. Let's take this first order partial derivative with respect to y. We still have a y up here in the exponent, and so that means we have a function of y. So we're going to take the natural log of the base, keep that exponential exactly the way it is. Then we're going to chain rule out the derivative of the exponent with respect to y because we're looking at the first order partial derivative with respect to y. Now we look at this. The y has a power of 1, the 3x squared, x is a number, so all of this is as if it's a coefficient, so it is going to come along for the ride, and the derivative of the y is just 1. Then when we look at negative x, the derivative of that with respect to y, x is a number, a derivative of a number is 0, so it's plus 0. Next term, plus y, that y really has a coefficient of 1. What's the derivative of 1 times y with respect to y? Just 1. And then you're done. So we can do second order partial derivatives. If we did it with that last one, it would be super ugly. So instead, let's do it with the basic form. And you'll still see some interesting things happening. The first order partial derivative with respect to x, it's an exponential natural log of the base. Keep it exactly the way it is. Chain rule out the derivative of the exponent with respect to x, you get y. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as y natural log of 5, 5, sorry, xy. Now let's take that guy's second order partial derivative with respect to x. That means we're going to use this first order and look at the derivative with respect to x. y is a number, natural log of 5 is a number. They are both coming along for the ride because they are considered coefficients. 5 raised to the xy is an exponential just like this. And the interesting thing is we're going to get this whole first derivative again as we take that guy's derivative. So we get the natural log of the base times keep it exactly the way it is times the derivative of the exponent with respect to x is going to be y. Yes, you could rewrite this. y times y is y squared. Natural log of 5 times itself squared times 5 to the xy. Not sure that looks that much better, but it does bring more terms together. Let's go ahead and do the derivative, the second order derivative, only the mixed one. In other words, we're going to go from here and we're going to do the second order partial derivative in the mixed one with respect to y. This says take the first order derivative with respect to x and then whatever you get, now take the derivative of that guy with respect to y. So we're going to take the derivative of this guy with respect to y. There are two functions here with y. Natural log of 5 times y and 5 to the xy. There's two of them, so it is a product rule. Let's take the derivative of the first. The first guy is natural log of 5 times y. We just get that coefficient. The second piece comes along for the ride, plus the first 
times the derivative of the second, and the derivative of 5 raised to the xy is natural log of the base. Keep him the way he is. Chain rule out the derivative of the exponent with respect to y, which gives you x. Yes, you can bring everything back in together again. I'm going to just leave it like that for you. So that's it. Hope you're having a great day.